Once I have blueprint cabinets being copied, my main focus is locking in conveyors on my blueprint desk. Conveyors can be upgraded to grabbers, which upgrade to smart grabbers or rotating grabbers. Smart and rotating grabbers will upgrade to each other in a cycle. If you need a smart grabber and have a rotating grabber in a cabinet, you can upgrade it to become a smart grabber instead. Getting your first grabber is going to make a big difference in your restaurant. Grabbers can be used to cut down on a lot of clicks. For example, grabbers can pull ingredients onto counters, which saves the player a lot of time. This also reduces juggling. Instead of having to place all the ingredients on counters and then chop them for a salad, the player can pull lettuce onto a counter with a grabber and then only have to get tomato themselves. Make sure you have a yellow grabber and not a blue conveyor. The blue conveyor will not grab items, but it will continue to push lines of automation if you need an extra square to pass something onto. The next day, you can have both ingredients pulled onto counters for easy salad assembly mode. All you have to do is bring a clean plate and boom, rabbit food. If you have a mixer, you can replace the counter with a mixer. For salads, I do not recommend having a mixer for tomatoes because it will make tomato sauce instead of a tomato slice. If you want to automate tomato slices, you'll need a compactor bin, a smart grabber, and a conveyor mixer set up like this. Smart grabbers are a little finicky. I like to think of smart grabbers as baby ducks. They will imprint on the first thing they see. Here, the smart grabber will pull the entire tomato before it even gets mixed, compared to a regular grabber, which will wait for the process to finish and then grab the finished product. To set a smart grabber, you can isolate the smart grabber in practice mode to put the correct item on it. Another way to set a smart grabber is to place something else on it first before it grabs whatever it sees. Then you'll have lots of time to set it to the correct item. The conveyor mixer will face the compactor bin, so any overflow gets thrown into the bin, including tomato sauce. The compactor bin will empty itself every 10 seconds. If space is an issue, you can have a tomato being pulled onto a workstation and chop it manually. You can use a conveyor mixer to push the lettuce into the prep station as well. This saves you a grabber and a space on the floor. I find that salad is one of the easier dishes to automate. In this restaurant, I started upgrading prep stations and bins before I needed them. Think ahead about the kinds of things you can start upgrading and discounting while you're waiting to have enough grabbers ready. Try to lock in extra grabbers if you can. Once you need one, you'll need a lot more. Obviously, a smaller map like this won't have much more room to automate. The bigger the map, the more space you'll have to store extra appliances, your research area, and your automation. Grabbers can also be used to pull cooked food off of hobs. For example, I can place the fish on the hob and the grabber will pull the fish onto the counter for the servers. This means the cook doesn't have to babysit the hobs to prevent the food from burning. It also means we can queue up more readily cooked fish for when it gets busier. With a safety hob and one more grabber, red and blue fish are completely automated here. Uh oh, this fish didn't cook. Fish fillet need to be chopped before they can be cooked. If you want to automate fillet, you'll have to have a mixer in the setup. Most people prefer to use a conveyor mixer because it saves a grabber. If the fish aren't chopping fast enough, use a rapid mixer to chop them more quickly and to give you an extra spot for ready to cook fish. Uh oh, this one didn't cook either. Spiny fish need the player to remove the bone before it can be cooked. If you want to automate spiny fish, you'll need a portioner and a compactor bin on the line. It is recommended to portion off a grabber before the hob so you'll have more deboned spiny fish ready to cook. Remember that for fish, the baskets will show a random fish each day. This means every single fish basket line needs to be prepared for any possible fish. Here's an example of a two basket set up for red, blue, filet, and spiny fish. If you want to use a prep station, make sure it's a regular prep station. I repeat, do not use frozen prep stations for fish. Do not. Because the fish will change every day, you don't want leftover red fish in your spiny fish prep. Oh yeah, there's actually one more fish type I haven't talked about yet, which is uh, crab cakes. 
So here's what you do when you get the Crab Cakes card. You choose the other card. Automating Crab Cakes is a bit of a headache and needs a lot more grabbers and planning. It can be done, but it's a bit more complex than any other fish type and needs much more room. Don't worry though, one day I'll teach ya. One day. There's often confusion on whether a smart grabber or a regular grabber is needed. In most cases, either grabber can work. There are some cases where smart grabbers can and cannot be used. When you do use a smart grabber, you'll likely need to set it so it will pull the correct item. In this case, I have cooked potatoes being pulled off of a safety hop. The regular grabber will wait for the potato to cook, and the smart grabber will pull the raw potato right away. As long as you set the smart grabber to grab cooked potatoes, it will work. There are many cases like this where either grabber is fine. The smart grabber may need to be set. It really depends on what you're doing. It also depends on how many grabbers you have. When a process on an appliance is simple and automatic, a regular grabber will do. A smart grabber is required for pulling specific items. They are also used for processes that require player input or extra steps after the initial process is complete. Keep in mind that the only difference between grabbers and rotating grabbers is that rotating grabbers can be turned to go left or right instead of just directly ahead. Sometimes you'll need to trade out some grabbers in your setup if you need a rotating grabber to fit in a corner. Part of why I enjoy Plate Up so much is because I love the challenge of figuring out how to organize my automation in a confined space. A smart grabber is very helpful for a dishwashing setup. If you have a dishwasher or wash basin, a smart grabber set to grab clean plates will save you some time. All you need to do is load the dishes in, turn on the dishwasher, and the smart grabber will put them away for you. When the dishwasher finishes a cycle, it will open automatically. It only requires player input to close the dishwasher. Remember to make sure you set the grabber first, otherwise it'll steal all the dirty plates. If you have a wash basin, you can load up the wash basin with 30 plates and wash up to four at a time once it's full. If you're feeling super lazy, you can get a grabber pulling plates from a dish rack and stand there with a scrubby brush. This also works with a power sink if you prefer. Just make sure someone is gonna serve the food. The only sink that is completely automatic is the soaking sink. If I put a dirty plate into the soaking sink, the grabber will wait for the process to finish. Grabbers will never pull a dirty plate out of a soaking sink. I promise. For solo gameplay, one or two soaking sinks and some grabbers should be enough to keep up with your dirty dishes. Dish racks are great for soaking sink setups. Add in a few grabbers in between the tables and extend your tables to make sure you have enough seats. Then hook up the grabbers to your soaking sink setup and now everything is automated. If you're not sure what to automate first, I recommend a dish clearing and cleaning system if you're playing solo. This will give you more time to focus on cooking and serving until you can automate production. If you're playing multiplayer, find ways to help the chefs cook faster. Find ways to use grabbers to reduce how much your chefs are running around and use grabbers to get food to the servers faster. Okay, let's look at some more food automation. If I put a potato into a mixer, the grabber will not pull until the potato becomes chopped. If I put a potato into a heated mixer, the grabber will not pull until the potato has been chopped and heated into fries. Grabbers will always wait for the processes to finish before pulling. This includes heated mixers, which sometimes have both chopping and cooking processes. Grabbers are very patient and very polite. They will always wait for your food to cook and for your ingredients to be mixed or kneaded. If you have a food that can be portioned and a prep station and a grabber, you can automate portioning food. This will work for foods such as turkey, pizza, soup, mashed potato, broccoli, and cookies. Place the food on a counter and have a portioner pointing out of it. Place a grabber after the portioner and then a prep station. Voila! The cook can focus on cooking and the server can easily scoop food up. This helps the cook queue up more food for the servers. You can also put the food in a freezer to have a little bit more food ready to go in the next day. And now for a quick recap. As you can see, there are so many uses for grabbers. 
take some time to practice using them when you can. Grabbers are great for pulling items that need to be chopped into counters or mixers. They can also be used to pull cooked food from hobs or items from portioners into prep stations. Be mindful of which type of grabber you need. Regular grabbers and rotating grabbers will work in most cases. Regular grabbers are polite and will wait for the process to finish. Smart grabbers are baby ducks. They will imprint on the first item they see. Smart grabbers are great for grabbing specific items such as the tomato slices from the mixer instead of the tomato sauce, or the clean plates from the dishwasher or sink. Smart grabbers can be used in many cases where regular grabbers can be used. Just don't forget to set the smart grabber. The next video will talk about more uses for smart grabbers, so stay tuned! For solo play, consider automating your dishes first. It doesn't have to be a crazy setup like this. Even one soaking sink and a dish rack will make things easier for you. For multiplayer, use grabbers for getting food to the servers more easily. Find ways to use grabbers to reduce how much your chefs are walking to make food. Every grabber makes a difference. Let me know if you learned anything, or if you have any questions or suggestions. Stay tuned for the next video, where we'll be covering more complex automation. Later taters! Have a good one, bye!